Um, so I've got the candidates up on the stage. That was the big job. That I just had on. Okay. So before we get started, as we traditionally do, if you'd all stand and join me in the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good, no needs. No one's on their head. Very good. Okay. Um, I'd never get back to So thanks everyone for uh, attending our, our annual uh, Point Roberts Registered Commerce Association Candidates Night. Um, just uh, to let you know, it looks like we have the entire fire department here. <laughs> So, so don't worry, if there's a fire, we're going to be in good hands, okay? um, So I'd like to introduce the candidates, uh, um, and after that I'll just go over the, uh, the format um, so everybody's uh, aware of how we're going to conduct this, which is the same thing that we do every year, the same format. So, um, starting off to my left here, I have Whatcom County Council at large position, Mary Kay uh, Robinson. Okay. Um, that's Dan, right? <laughs> uh, Dan Robbins, next to her, who is running for Port District number one. Uh, Michael Shepard, who is running for Port District number one, Dan's opponent. Okay, I'll put this together as we go. <laughs> <laughs> Barry Buchanan, who is running for Whatcom County Council at large and is Barry's opponent. And this is Rudd Brown, who was gracious enough to come up. Rudd's been up here many times for, uh, for our candidates night over the years. Rudd is, until November, our Point Roberts, one of our Point Roberts at large representatives. However, with the redistricting, redistricting that the, the county council did this past year, we will no longer, we will no longer vote for it. But he came up anyway, so thanks very, thanks very much, Rudd. Appreciate it. And to my right, I have uh, Barry McCann. No, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I, I, I had a long day. A long day at the Marina today. <laughs> Barry Wagner, who's, who's uh, running for Point Di uh, Fort District number two, and I don't think your opponent is here. I didn't, I didn't get an RSVP. Okay? Our local candidates. Um, we have Donna Gillespie, who is running for Point Roberts Fire District, position number two. Um, no. Her opponent is no. Pat Harper. Also running, obviously, for Point Roberts Fire District, position number two. And then Mr. Mercy, Mr. Bill Mercy, okay. who is running for re-election for Point Roberts Fire District, position number three. And as of right now, your opponent, Mr. Judson Merrill, hasn't showed up yet. So. We also have, sitting in the front uh, row here, we have Rhiannon Allen, who asked me for some time at the beginning of this. Uh, which will grant her, she would just want to present the pro statement for the, the recent proposed parks levy. Um, so I'll have Rhiannon come up and give that statement and then she can go back and see. Hold on one second, I just want to go over the format. So just to remind everyone, a lot of you folks have been here before, the format is we're going to allow each one of the candidates to speak for a couple of minutes. Keep it brief, please, right? Got a lot of ground to cover tonight. And um, then we'll have a open question and answer session, which I'll moderate. I'll be standing right over there like I always do. Please keep your <laughs> questions to a couple of minutes, and please announce your name. This is a request not only from Mr. Pat Grubb from APD, but also because we're video recording this on you, and we'll post this on YouTube, by the way. Just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. Please announce your name before you ask your question. I'll call on you as you raise your hands in the order that you raise your hands. So that's as simple as that. Again, thanks everyone for attending this evening, and uh, I'll stop talking now, and uh, if okay with you guys, I'll just go in the order left to right. Mary Kay. Okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, I'm going to stage, I'll tell you. Okay. Uh, Mary Kay Robinson. Thank you, Ryan. We're going to do the questions by context, or at the end, Mary Ann. Mary Ann. Is this mic okay? Yeah. 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 Fine. Hi, I'm Rhiannon and Allen, and I want to speak in favor of a very important uh, tax levy that's on your ballot that will really affect the quality of life in Point Roberts, and I'm speaking in favor of it. 
Uh, the current tax levy for the park, Point Roberts Park and Recreation District expires this year. There will be no new funds coming into the Parks and Recreation uh, District uh, until, unless this levy is approved. The 2017 ballot contains uh, a proposal to renew this expiring levy at a level that the parks, elected Parks Board considered necessary to, for continued funding of park and recreation. Now, park, just for those of you who might not be familiar with it, the park funds are used to operate this community centre and its environments like the playground and, and the community garden. Baker Field and the surrounding trails and skate park and facilities like that. And to subsidize various initiatives such as the seniors lunches, um, the children's summer program, um, booking meetings for this uh, room and so on. Now unlike all the other Point Roberts uh, tax districts, other than the cemetery, park and recreation operates on a very small budget. It has no on-site staff to help it manage it, um, and um, they, each of the commissioners has ended up, we, we did a rough calculation of between 30, a total of 30 and 40 hours a week to keep these facilities running and completely volunteer uh, work. Now, as operating costs have increased, and by the way, property values have fallen. The budgets, the previous levy is failing to keep up with even the day-to-day -day routine operations of the park and rec commission. So the commissioner has decided to ask for a tax levy of 21 and a half cents on every $1,000 of assessed property value. Um, these levy funds will be used to fund um, maintenance, uh, including both the routine things like uh, mowing the lawn and you know keeping the light bulbs changed and things like that, as well as more major costs like replacing the septic system, which, as I understand it, is in danger of failing relatively soon. Uh, it will also be used to hire a part-time manager who will help things with things like booking of facilities. Um, you know, paying uh, subcontractors like lawn borrowers and things like that, and the operation of various uh, things that the district provides. And it hopefully will be able to expand some services after soliciting community input about what extra things that we would like uh, to see the park sponsor. Now, I want to emphasize again, if this levy does not pass, the park district will have no new operating income and will need to cut back services dramatically. So I really urge you not to skip over that item on your ballot <coughs> tomorrow. Yes, and vote in favor of the new levy. Thank you again. And just a reminder, candidates, once again, just uh, if you could keep it as brief as possible, a couple of minutes or two or three minutes each, that would be great. I appreciate it. Thank you. So good evening, and thank you to the Joel, the committee who set this up. It's great. I know it takes a little bit of effort to put these things together. And thanks to all of you for being here tonight. I know there's other things you probably could have been doing. There's a Monday night football game on for one, um, but you're here. So thank you for your commitment to democracy and the elected process. So my name is Mary Kay Robinson. I'm running for Washington County Council at large, and that means y'all can vote for me. And um, I'm a 30-year resident of Whatcom County. I have raised my children here. I have successfully launched them out into the world. And I have spent the bulk of my career in um, faith management and real estate. And in that capacity, I did a lot of work on affordable housing issues. In, in fact, what I did was I was uh, certified as a first-time homebuyer trainer through the Washington State Housing Finance Commission. I was the lender who did the first 12, I piloted the first 12 loans through the Coalition Community Land Trust, which is a great nonprofit organization. And then last year, I was president of the Whatcom County Association for Realtors in Whatcom County, and in that capacity, did a lot of advocating for affordable housing issues for the residents in our community. In the community, uh, I believe in giving back 
to the community that I so if we get those riches then we want to give back and so I served on the board of city club I was um, uh, appointed to the Whatcom County Ethics Commission by P. Kremen and then later reappointed by Jack Laus and uh, it was a, an honor to serve as a trusted advisor in that arena and I was also a founding board member of Communities and Schools which is an organization that looks to increase graduation rates. Now fast forward to today in my community service I have served I serve on the board of law advocates which gives legal assistance to those in need for the Lincoln residents. I am on the nursing advisory committee for the community college, Whatcom Community College. I'm a chamber ambassador. I help organize the Blossom Time Parade. That's that weekend parade on uh, Memorial Weekend. It's a big one. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. So for my campaign, there's several issues that I'm focusing on. Number one is affordable housing. Not subsidized housing, but I'm talking about housing for the middle class, that vast middle class can we afford to actually live and work in Whatcom County. Number two is preserving and increasing family wage jobs, and that happens through economic development. And then, then with those two things, with affordable housing and jobs, then we create the quality of life that everybody wants. Um, as far as today, the status quo that we have right now mm -hmm. is not acceptable. We have spiraling rates and housing prices. We have, um, as far as economic development, we're looked at, as far as Whatcom County, we're not seen as a very business-friendly environment. There was a headline the other day in the paper that wages in Bellingham continue to lag behind the state average. So what are we going to do about all that stuff? Well, that's one of the reasons that I decided to run for council, was to actually look at those issues and try to find solutions. So my name is Mary Kay Robinson. I'm running for Whatcom County Council at large. I'd love to have your support in November. Um, if you want more information about me or my campaign, you can go to my website, Families for Mary Kay, or go to my Facebook page. I've got a series of videos, short little snippets, if you want to find more, more about me and my campaign. So thank you. Well, good evening. I'm Dan Robbins, and I've been your port commissioner for the past four years. But uh, right now, uh, we all kind of have heavy hearts for the folks in Las Vegas and, and the families there, so keep those folks in your prayers tonight. Um, I'm proud to have served as your port commissioner for the past four years. Uh, I've owned seven successful businesses. One is an oyster business on Hood Canal and, uh, called the Hama Hama Oyster Company and a tree farm over there in the Hoodsport area. They had a chain of party stores and a chain of toy stores. But the big balance that needs to take place today is with the, with the environment and the economy. And they, the environment and the economy can and must coexist. To me, sustainability is when the environment and the economy are in balance. And uh, we can make that happen. I'm a very dedicated port commissioner. I've never missed a port commission meeting. I've returned every phone call. I have a wonderful relationship with our uh, senators and legislators. I voted for the largest environmental cleanup in the history of the Port of Bellingham, $34 million in the Bakken Waterway. We've created over 500 jobs on the new waterfront district in Bellingham, and those include All-American Marine, uh, Fairhaven Shipyard, New Holiday Inn at the airport, <coughs> along with the biggest, uh, one of the biggest solar panel uh, companies in the, in the country. Um, <clears throat> we started construction on that new waterfront development uh, last year after it sat idle for 12 years as a brownfield. Uh, we've saved the port uh, $1.2 million by taking our health system. We have 100 employees, and for health care, we decided to drop regions and self-insure and, uh, and then, which was basically the same type of policy, and then we took out a catastroph catastrophic policy in case someone was, uh, went over and above the limits that we had. And that, in, in a four-year period, saved $1.2 million. I've been endorsed by all the three past port commissioners in the Port of Bellingham, which were Scott Walker, Doug Smith, and uh, Jim Jorgensen, and all six mayors of the small cities in Whatcom County. We have $400 million in assets, and we have a $30 million budget, and I would be your voice of experience and balance. 
I ask for your vote in this nonpartisan race on uh, November 7th. Uh, there's four of us that are running this year that have taken no money from any parties, and we are, it's a nonpartisan race, and we're running as independents. We're not getting any support whatsoever from either party, and that way we'll be holding only to the folks in Hawking County. Thank you for coming out tonight, and I appreciate your vote in November. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, my name is Michael Shepard, and I'm running for a court of Bellingham in District 1. And my public service announcement about the court is that everybody in Waukee County gets to vote for the court in both races that are on the ballot, no matter where you live. And not everybody always knows what the court does or what the commission does, and that's been one of the real privileges of getting to run this election is getting to let people know about the important work the court does already and can do for people throughout Waukee County. Uh, I'm a 20-year resident here in Waukee County. I've got uh, two small kids, and my wife is a teacher in the Bellingham School District. Uh, my degrees are, I've got two degrees from Western Washington University, and two years ago, I finished my PhD at the University of British Columbia, uh, not too far from here. So I crossed, this, crossed that border about a million times <laughs> while I was doing that, um, back and forth, back and forth. Um, when I am not running for election or running after my, my two and four year old, uh, I work as a professor, so I teach classes in both environmental studies and anthropology. Um, I also serve on a couple boards and commissions. I serve on the Portage Bay Shellfish Advisory Board uh, for Whatcom County, and it overlooks water quality data from the whole Nooksack River drainage, making sure that those shellfish beds in and around the Lummi Peninsula are productive and open. Uh, I also serve on the board for Pulsion Community Land Trust, which works on affordable housing uh, countywide in Rockland County. And I'm, I'm running for the, the port because I see a real opportunity for the port to work on um, projects that are close to my, my own values. So think both the opportunities and the challenges that I see in Whatcom County. We all know Whatcom County is a really wonderful place to live, but it's becoming a challenging place to afford especially for people who are trying to buy their first home, uh, trying to take that first career that they have and be able to support their families, uh, to be able to have the lifestyle that we want to be able to have up here. So what do we do about that? Well, I think we all know that the, there's no magic solution, but we have to be able to work on those family wage job creation, and that's got to be done on a countywide basis. And for me, it's exciting that the port has a mandate from the state to do just that, to work on countywide economic development for our whole community. The other major projects for the Port of Bellingham are the GP waterfront redevelopment in downtown Bellingham. That is 230 acres of prime developable, wa developable waterfront property. And for me, uh, environmental sustainability also intersects directly into my vision of economic development. So I have a record-setting number of endorsements. Um, in, I've got over 27 organizational endorsements from groups like the Whatcom County Democrats, uh, the Whatcom County Firemen, Teamsters, 17 different uh, labor unions, two environmental groups, and a range of others. It represents, thou those organizations that have endorsed me represent literally thousands of workers here in Whatcom County. And so I really am proud to have that number of endorsements and I'm um, excited to be running and hope to represent uh, the Port of Bellingham for everyone here. So thank you again for being here tonight. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to this forum. Thanks so much for, for uh, having us out here tonight. My name is Barry Buchanan. I am currently the chair of the Whatcom County Council. I was elected in 2013 to the council. Uh, I'm a fourth generation Whatcom County native and a U.S. Navy veteran. Uh, my family uh, moved to Whatcom County in the late 1800s and they settled in rural Whatcom County and they took up the three main businesses that was of the day, and that was fishing, farming, and logging. So each one of my great uncles kind of broke off and went into that line of work. And, uh, you know, they 
my family was very big into public service. I had uh, one of my uncles was a Whatcom County Commissioner in the 60s, and my cousin now is a U.S. Congressman. Um, so I kind of got bit by that bug of public service, and uh, I've served as uh, chair of my neighborhood association in Bellingham, the Leonard Streets Neighborhood Association. I served as the chair of the Whatcom County Democratic Party for six years. Um, I've served, uh, or my wife and I, 44 years, we uh, founded the Bellingham High School Alumni Band back in, in the 90s uh, that brought all of us back together that had that magic of music in, in school that we all really, really had a fondness for and we were able to get together and do it again uh, after almost 40 years of not doing it, so it was awesome. I served a term on the Bellingham City Council. I have now served a term, in a, a term on the Whatcom County Council. And some of the work that I've done and am proud of are uh, indicative of some of the fine gentlemen we have here tonight from the, from the fire service, and that was the EMS levy. I was on the team that crafted that levy and uh, put it forward for a successful vote last year. And uh, I'll tell you, these, these folks earn every bit of that, uh, of that election result. They're just very hardworking and life-saving folks. Um, the other things that I'm really running to, to to get Whatcom County going is public health and safety, uh, economic development. We've had a, a we just formed a advisory committee to help ad advise the port in economic uh, development. That was put together by Mr. Brown and uh, Council Member Sidhu, and I supported that. It's just an advisory committee to to uh, kind of integrate ideas from from business. So the committee is going to be business, very business heavy and be able to convey ideas back you know, into the, element, or the economic development efforts put forth by the port. Um, I'm also endorsed by a plethora of organizations, the Whatcom Dams, the uh, Washington, Washington Conservation Voters, the Sierra Club, Northwest Washington Labor Council, the Teamsters, and other labor groups. Um, it's just such a pleasure to be here tonight to see uh, democracy in action, and everybody is just excited about this election. Aren't we, right? So, <laughs> sure. so thank you again for having us here tonight, and uh, I hope to get your support in November. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm Rob Brown, and I'll just uh, point out, for those of you who I haven't uh, buried in literature, this summer, but, uh, I'm your current at-large representative. I was elected along with Barry in 2013. Uh, this year, I'm running in South Bellingham, but as you guys still pay me for this position until at least the end of the year, I'm obligated to turn up. And I enjoy turning up here. I've, I've always I've been to several events at Point Roberts, and um, of course the handy dandy Nexus card always makes it easy to be here. <laughs> uh, my, my history is fairly simple. I started off in Australia, came to Canada actually originally for two weeks, and that was in 1987. I was supposed to do two weeks of work there, that turned into one year. I met and married my wife, who's Canadian. And I started a business on 12th and Granville in the reuse and uh, remarketing of mobile computers. I was actually the first person in the world to do that. I was really just looking for a way of paying for supporting my wife and myself. Uh, it sort of snowballed a bit. It ended up being 360 people spread across five countries. And I moved the headaches from Vancouver, actually, to that point, North Delta. I moved that down to Bellingham in 1994. Uh, in the 20 odd years that I've been in um, Bellingham at that stage, I have served on multiple boards and commissions, served on the Ethics Commission, served on, um, well, on the boards up at Western, uh, Richard Collins. I've been um, very involved and very engaged in community issues. In 2011, I sold that business and I decided to look for some other way of doing public service, so I decided to run for election. And uh, I now split my time between this role and the county council and then helping other young companies get established. There's a lot of issues facing us in the county going forward. Uh, number one on my agenda is trying to increase the level of family wage jobs. It's trying to, with equal uh, importance, I would say, is uh, affordable housing, particularly entry-level housing. And then I'm trying to do something to move the needle on uh, economic development. As, as Barry had said, we've worked on um, uh, business community but behind that is a reallocation of the economic development funds that we collect every year, which is about $3.5 million. We're looking at 
uh, peeling off about a half a million dollars of that every year on a very focused economic development strategy that trades on the strengths of the communities. And that's important because Point Roberts has particular strengths. And what we need to do is identify what those strengths are in terms of how they will attract the right type of investment in here and the right type of jobs here. So I'm assuming several of the people here have to go north to find employment during the day and it'd be nice if we could bring some of that further south. I'm probably going over my time, but I'm happy to answer any questions going forward. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm Barry Winger. Can you hear that okay? Yeah. Okay. I have a soft voice, so sometimes I have to shout in there, but I want to blast you out. Um, so I, I'm uh, born and raised in Seattle, Washington, in a you know, uh, blue-collar family. I had three brothers at the University of Washington uh, on an athletic scholarship, and then I actually studied a lot of hard science. Um, and then I actually took a break and wanted to work on some sort of community thing with the environment. But back, this is back in the early 70s, and the in coined environment or ecology yet. So um, actually I ended up going to Huxley College. Uh, and just just opening up, they hadn't built the building up in Western and I got my Bachelor of Science in uh, Environmental Planning. Started a 43 year career uh, that I worked with uh, local communities just like this on their shoreline redevelopment plans, the waterfront plans, salmon restoration, wetland restoration, floodplain management. I've worked with Seattle, Tacoma, Everett, Olympia, the ports in uh, Port Angeles, Port Townsend, Spokane, I mean, Muckdeal, this is an amazing background on this. And I retired five years ago. I happily retired for five years, actually doing community work, bringing in grants for nonprofits to do that type of work. So why in the world am I running for public office? Well, that's a good question. I never thought I would be four months ago. I didn't think so. But when I worked for the Department of Ecology as a senior environmental planner, I actually uh, advised uh, actually four different governors, um, but I would never wanted to be a politician. I wanted to be the person working with the scientists, the engineers, planners, the architects, and then presenting that information in a cohesive fashion to the politicians who so then can make it happen. Well, the port, so I've been a big critic of the port when I worked for the Department of Ecology. I saw they had made a lot of mistakes over the years, and I tried to call them out, and they corrected a lot of them, and then commissioners changed. But at this point in time, you know, there was a vision that was done, it was called the Waterfront Futures Group, and the Waterfront Visioning Process. The city of the port spent $600,000 of public money trying to figure out what does that community want the waterfront to look like. And one of the couple things they really wanted was they wanted a marine trades area that supports the fishermen, the boat builders, and the other marine trades, electronics, and everything else, to remain really cohesive and, and really strong. That's kind of our one of our heritages up here. I come from a fishing family myself. And so I really wanted to make sure that happened and that was protected. The second thing on the other side of the waterway, the Walkham Waterway, is where the old uh, mill site was. And so to grow that city down to the waterfront with maximum public access, new corridors, and then the right mix of uses. So you don't build the downtown that just connects the downtown. But you want to get jobs in there, not just retail jobs. You need to get entertainment jobs and things like that. So it's going to be an interesting place. But I want to bring in uh, small high-tech businesses that complement the, the large firm that was in there, that just came down there, so that young people can actually graduate from college, make a living, and pay their rent. It's gotten so expensive to Vancouver and Seattle. We're a, we're a, you know, a, a diamond in the rough. And I think we can really make this happen. So those are my vision. That's my vision, basically, is to bring that together. And I started a pretty and I was a firefighter. I was an EMT back in the 70s. First one, actually, on Salmon Island. So thank you for your work. Really do appreciate it. And I hope I get to go on November 7th. Thank you. I grew up in the area. Um, I did graduate from Latin um, High School. My family is still on the other side of the border. And Tom and I, uh, you know, <laughs> he doesn't like me to tell you this, but the Americans aren't the only ones that have illegal aliens. 
I met Tom in Canada, and he was working illegally there. So when he was invited to come across the border, we decided that I would come with him. And so we lived in the, we got married, and lived in Tacoma, Piaget Sound area for almost 30 years, and came back here. Um, I'm running for commissioner three position, and I'd like to thank you all for coming and my worthy opponent here. Um, I got involved in the position because uh, side issues were taking away from what I saw as the mission of the fire department. To me, it is, as I see it, it's the only entity in Point Roberts that actually works with a business plan and uh, good management practices. It has a five-year plan, annual budget, monthly budget, they worked within discrepancies, make allowances for it, and they're available for public view. Um, I, my goal is not to have the taxes raised for EMTs and the um, fire department budget. I think they're operating very efficiently and productively right now. And I just like to help increase community awareness uh, I graduated from Ryerson. I have a degree in media. And I think that I could put that to good use to help um, educational programs in Point Roberts with the fire department. Um, I have, I worked as an accountant for a property management company since the 70s, and including my own. So um, I'm more grounded in business. So anyway, I'd like to thank you all for listening and thank you. Well, my name is uh, Pat Harper. I'm running for fire commissioner position three. And uh, I moved to Point Roberts with my wife in about um, 05. We bought some property. And we uh, struggled for a couple of years working through the wetland issues. And we got a barn built. It took a couple of years to do that. And we moved into the barn. And then we built a house. And we just finished the house about a year ago. And uh, so we're well grounded now. We got a place to live and shelter and all that. My background has been the U.S. Forest Service. I uh, spent 35 years with the U.S. Forest Service. Um, I started off in um, engineering and went through probably six different fields of engineering in that 35 years. And about midway through the, the career, I got involved in fire. Fire is kind of like a, a other duties assigned in the Forest Service. And uh, so I started probably back in about 75 um, on uh, details and on wildland fire issues and then we kept up to that and then about um, the 90s um, well actually in 87 I switched from um, finance into logistics and fire and then in the 90s, I switched into a, a um, what you call an incident management team, kind of a federal, uh, covering most of the western United States. And between my engineering duties and then when the team gets dispatched, I have to drop those duties and go with the team. And uh, I've seen a lot of different fire situations, and um, I feel that. Point Roberts is kind of at risk for wildland fire. I mean, it's not going to be a big collaboration because we only got 4.9 square miles, but you burn six or 700 acres here, it's not going to be very pretty anymore. So I think I can help um, uh, educate the community and work with the fire department in doing that. I think our fire department is an excellent fire department. They get a lot done um, with the volunteer help. 
union and with the cross-border working together. I mean, we got quite a service here that you would normally not have uh, for a department this small. And I just want to make sure the chief gets the support he needs to keep them that, uh, going in that direction. They have a budget which they call our commissioners. Is, duty is to oversee that budget, make sure it goes right, and they spend on the right things. But uh, periodically, they have to replace equipment. And one of the things they try to do is um, uh, try and get grants for that. So far, we've been pretty good. At some point in time, we may not be able to do that. And then we'll have to ask for some more money, but hopefully that is down the road. But I want to thank you uh, for your cooperation and listening and showing up tonight. And vote for me in position number two. Thank you. Can I go first? Have you guys decided? Yeah. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Thanks, John. So you weren't here, but uh, keep your statements to the maximum three minutes. No time. And when I stand up, we're at three minutes. Thank okay. you. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for the opportunity to speak tonight. Uh, without the electorate, uh, electorate, we wouldn't be here. My name is Judson Merrill. I'm a candidate for Commissioner Position 2, Fire District 5. My campaign has three solutions to offer. They are listen to the people, two, cooperate with the groups and agencies, three, innovate for win-win solutions. The three results in mind are public involvement, community synergy, constant improvement. With an overall goal of community unity by embracing our diversity, the incumbent Bill Mercer and I had a chance to get together and go over my concerns and update on the fire department progress. My motivating concerns for running were, one, the importance of emergency and disaster readiness, two, public input, especially on big decisions, three, relationships with other community agencies, specifically the health clinic. I'm pleased to report that much progress in these areas has been made. One, disaster readiness is pursued with improved communications and volunteer training by the fire department. Two, the door is open for the public to offer up their ideas for district improvement. Also, the meetings are on YouTube, so people who can't attend the meetings can see, can get updated there. Three, relationships with the health clinic are being addressed and restored. Uh, with the recent weather-related disasters in the south, it is becoming increasingly a concern for people in our region to be ready for events like earthquakes and tsunamis. With all the social issues relating to loneliness and despair, addiction and mental disorders, with all the emergencies, medical emergencies that happen, the fire and fire suppression needed. With all the duties that the fire district performs, like fire suppression, health preservation, disaster readiness, service training, networking, and community building. With all the experience Bill Merson has, has acquired, I would like to place my support to Bill. Um, the, new, the new commissioners, the chief, and the volunteers, the staff, and the trainees. At this time, uh, I feel the community would be best served by me supporting the acting Position 2 Commissioner Bill Mersey um, to continue my volunteer work rather than running against him. Uh, with our differences, we grow together by accepting each other. Thank you for supporting me and sharing with me your ideas and concerns.
remain in good hands, there's no doubt about it. Uh, you've done some good work in uh, CERT and in, in your ham radio. Keep that up and as a place for all of us. I, I do appreciate that. Uh, this is, it's much cleaner this way. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. To my enjoyment, I see uh, quite a few firefighters. I did not ask them to come here. <laughs> totally voluntarily. I, I had no idea that they were going to be here. Um, I hope I'm not out of line if I'm going to ask each and all of them to quickly stand up, say a name, and that's all I would like from you guys. Would you mind starting over there? Kevin Douglas. Brady Kelly. Corey Eaton. Uh, Westside Bosker. Brandon Croker. Stephen Wilson. Andrew Glorabell. Terry Scott. Nick Bondi. Josh Shields. Thank you. I'm Brad Lutz. I've been here for about five years now. Thank you guys. Thank you, uh, gentlemen. Uh, we also have a couple of lady firefighters, but they're not here. Um, and they do very well, too. Uh, captain Brad Lutz has been a firefighter here for five years. He's currently a captain. Uh, a much sought after position here on the point. Only the best will succeed in this department. They all know that. Talking about myself, I'll keep that extremely short. Bill Mersing is the name, immigrated from Holland to Canada, then to the States. I was an airline pilot in Holland, um, second officer on a uh, DC-8. You don't see them flying anymore unless you go to Africa. Um, after that, uh, Hercules C-130s, they're still around. Uh, I'm a MOT designated flight test examiner in Canada. Um, I've been an instructor, pilot for a good number of years. Multi-engine, instrument flying, light flying, you name it. Um, owned a restaurant and bar in Friday Harbor. Was a volunteer firefighter there with my dear wife, Jeanette, right over there. Um, so we knew the fire department a little bit. Not a lot, but we knew it enough that uh, when an opening came here, became available on the point here, I, uh, I said, okay, I'll do it. I was appointed 14 years ago. I uh, had two elections. This is the third election for me. Uh, going, yeah, in my 15, into my 15th year now. I hope to do it another six years. I'm asking all and all of you, um, very nicely, I hope, for your vote. I need it. Uh, I, uh, even without an opponent, um, I still do need you people. Uh, we, it's, not, it's not the commissioners that do the job in the fire department, folks. You have to understand that. It's those guys over there. If your cat is on the roof in the middle of the night and you want to get, get them down, you can call us. <laughs> Those are the guys that will come and help you out. If you break a toenail, if you chop a finger off, one or two or more, they'll be there. If you have a heart attack, they'll be there faster. They'll do anything for you. They won't ask you a question who you voted for, believe me. <laughs> they don't care. They are totally bipartisan and they will do it with a smile. If you are all into a ditch here on your lawnmower, <laughs> on your riding lawnmower, it's happened. All these little, little stores I'm telling, telling you, they have happened in the last couple of years, uh, some more than once. If you roll into the ditch, they'll pull you out of the ditch, even if you have a, a lot of alcohol <laughs> on you, in you, almost near you. We won't ask you if you have a deed, you know, if you had too much. It's not, none of our business. Very little help. Um, I bet I'm uh, over time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
<laughs> Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So uh, just to remind everyone, the format here is raise your hand, and I'll call you in the order, in the order that you raise your hand. Please try and keep your questions, 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 not a monologue, questions down to a very minimum. And uh, at the request of uh, Mr. Grubb and also myself, and because we're video recording this kind of thing on YouTube, could you please announce your name, even though most folks in here know everybody, right? So. Oh, and also one thing, you can ask a question to a specific candidate or a candidate and their opponent if you want both of them to speak, okay? And then likewise to you folks, if you keep your responses to the middle. Um, okay, Mark. Wow. Okay. Mark Robbins, uh, no relationship to the court commissioner. Uh, but my uh, question goes to uh, Barry Buchanan and Mary Kay Robinson. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have representatives of the pro and con side on the jail measure, but I'd like, uh, I, I, I suspect, I think I, I know what Terry's uh, position is since he didn't vote to put the measure on the uh, ballot, I suppose. I don't know Mary Kay's uh, position. I'd like to ask each candidate, in any event, I'd like to ask each candidate to uh, uh, give their position and explain why the voters should either vote for or against the uh, jail measure. How would you like to start? How would you, what, what, what order would you like us to start? Oh, it doesn't matter, right? Here, you go first, yeah. So, um, I've taken a, a tour of that current jail and it's, it's not acceptable. We need to do something about that. How can we expect the inmates to turn their lives around? If they're surrounded in you know surroundings that they are right now, it's 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 not good. Um, as far as the jail is concerned, it's you know, we need to to chart a path. Um, it's it's something that it's it's a big decision because it's a lot of money that we're talking about as far as the jail, and we need to decide as a community what we want to do. That's why I would absolutely vote to put it on the ballot, because we, the people, there's no one person that gets to decide what happens. We need to decide as a community. As far as the, um, the very report is coming out soon, um, I, or it's now, it's, it's going to be posted on, online. And I want to read it, quite frankly, because I, I don't want to make a, a final decision until I actually read both sides, because I think that's part of being a council member, looking at both sides of the issue, weighing those issues, and then making a decision. Is the proposal for the jail perfect? Probably not. But it's something that we should take both, a look at both sides and see what we need to do. But I absolutely support having it on the ballot so that we, the people, get to decide. Yes, I did. I voted against putting it on the ballot. And I did look at both sides for a, a few years and the problem I had with it was we have the, the kind of the cart before the horse in this instance in this proposal we have put together a very dynamic uh, advisory group called the incarceration prevention and reduction task force which has worked tirelessly now for a couple of years to, to find programs that are going to shrink our incarceration population and I, I'm just I'm against making a decision to build a jail at a certain size when there's really no data at all. There's no hard data to support that size. This is a new tax. This is something that uh, you, you can't quantify through any of the data that we have. So I voted against it because I just think we need to spend a little more time, a couple years, in formulating programs. We're working with the Vera Institute, which are uh, national experts on incarceration and how to reduce it. So I think it's important that we work towards getting uh, mental illness and substance abuse triaged out of the mainstream incarceration process. We need to be able to determine how to help folks that don't need to be in jail. They need help and they need professionals. And the new triage center we're going to be setting up, uh, regardless of the passage of this measure, is going to do just that. They are going to triage mental health and substance abuse 
away from the, the, the regular criminal justice process. So it's important that we do this right because it's very, very expensive. It's going to total out to be in the, in the $130 million uh, range once the bond's paid off. Actually, $200 million once the bond's paid off. So I don't think Whatcom County can afford to do this wrong. We need to do it right. I agree the jail that we have right now is really bad, and it's not a good place to work or to serve time as an inmate. Uh, and we need to invest some money into, into uh, re refurbishing that. We have to do that anyway. Because if we build a new jail, if this passes, it's still going to be years before that's operational. So uh, I, I, I'm going to vote no on, the, on my ballot, and I'm, I voted no against putting it on the, on the ballot because I, th I just think it, it's premature. We've studied it a long time, sure, but we still don't have hard data that tells us how big it should be. Braden Kelly, I just have a question for um, Pat and Donna. It's <coughs> uh, a two-part question. Uh, how do you see the fire department now, and uh, what direction do you see the fire department going over the next five years? Thank you. I see the, the fire department right now as Excuse the mic. I see. I see the fire department. Oh, you got it. That's okay. I see it operating efficiently right now. And under its present management, I have no reason to think that in five years from now it would be any different. Because I think adjustments are being made on a monthly and annual basis to account for things. Um, it, the grant process is... Um, being used as much as possible. So I, I'm happy with the present management and what's been happening in the community for over the last three years that I've seen it. So I'll turn the floor to Pat. I feel the uh, chief has done an excellent job. And he has been. He's got a wonderful operation going with cross-border help. And we have a lot more people for responders than we would normally have without that. And uh, so far we've gotten um, grants and things for stuff that needs to be replaced. And sooner or later there could be some big ticket items. You know, he may get those through a grant and stuff. He keeps trying and that may work out, like for the fire engine. And uh, for an ambulance and stuff, we're talking about a half million dollars possibly for a fire truck. I mean, it looks good because they keep it polished and everything like that, but you know, inside it's a wearing out like any vehicle does. And I think um, again, we got to keep that in mind just because it's nice and shiny and stuff. It'll need to be replaced. I mean, maybe we'll get it right. And uh, the chief does a lot of community outreach along with the uh, firefighters. You see them down at the parking lot and the car watches. We have the kids up at the firehouse uh, in their annual open house. And they come down at the senior center and do um, blood tests and all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's a great service for this community. I think we'll uh, keep on this track and keep our eyes on the budget and pray that we get some uh, grants. I think we'll be doing just fine. In the meantime, we've got to educate the community about the wildland fire issues and uh, health issues and try and keep them out of the ditches and stuff. <laughs> uh, any other? Questions? Thank you. Thank you. Did you guys hear that wrong? Yeah, that's when he
Steve O'Neill, by the way. Steve O'Neill. I have a question for Barry Langer and the four commissioners uh, candidates. And that is, I understand that a large part of what you do is community development, uh, economic development in a variety of different areas in Walton County. What might you be able to do for us here in Point Roberts? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not too low. Is that okay? We can, you can raise it. Perfect. Yep. Um, well, one of the things that I've done in my career is actually work with businesses and work with uh, tribal folks, with uh, state government or state and federal governments, uh, local jurisdictions, and towns and counties to bring those different stakeholders together to come up with a good solution. And actually, I did that with with Steve years ago on this blackfish project uh, out of the point, which I was glad to go by today and see he's still working on. But um. One of the things that, that you're pretty isolated out here, and the the or the port is, you know, we all we're all paying into this to, to stimulate economic, economic development. Pardon me. And uh, so I would like I would like to work with the little economic uh, development <laughs> council we have here um, to figure out some innovative ways to maybe bring some some projects here. Uh, when I work um, at the state, I work with flood uh, and drainage districts to help them figure out problems and bring money and grants in just to uh, find solutions. Uh, and that's what I'm actually really good at. So, uh, you know, maybe it's a, a public boat launch that you need. Uh, I know there's hard places, hard to find those kinds of places, but actually I know how to do that work. So, you know, I think the, the whole idea is just to bring the community together and figure out what are your economic objectives or your goals, who do you need? And then you'll have a voice in the port elected. Good question. So, you know, the port can work on economic development anywhere in Whatcom County. So they can purchase property, develop property, um, create infrastructure, and the port, as we know, doesn't have any facilities here. Our closest facilities are in Blaine, at the Blaine Harbor, and also some industrial land in CMAPs. Um, and there, there's no reason the port couldn't have a, pr a presence here. There just has to be a project that is identified and is worked on um, to create the kind of economic development potential that the port has a mission for. And you know, one criticism of the port is that they have focused in a small geographic area too heavily. And that small geographic area is you know, the, the core of Bellingham proper and not as much countywide, whereas everyone in Whatcom County does pay into the port if you own a home. Um, and so I, I don't have the answer for you exactly on what the port should do here in Point Roberts. That's gonna be have, have to be something that we hear from you fine folks. One pro couple projects I do know are in Blaine, which is fairly, fairly close to here. Um, two things that come up a lot are the infrastructure needs at the Blaine Marina. That is port property. Right now, the, the road that goes out to the outer pier is missing a big section, and so there's no handicap and uh, accessible access out to that uh, final uh, pier for people who like to go crabbing and just enjoy that facility. And the, the whole marina as a whole has additional capacity for both meeting the needs of our recreational boating community and the commercial fleet. And so we, I think as a port, we can invest more resources to make that facility really live up to its potential. Um, the, the other thing that I'm really excited about is uh, a couple years ago, Western Washington University did a study with All Board Washington, which is the rail advocacy organization for Washington State. And they found overwhelming support to the tune of 74% of those surveyed on both sides of the border for restarting the rail stop in Blaine Harbor. There used to be a rail stop there, and now there, there hasn't been one for almost 30 years. There is no rail stop on the Amtrak corridor between Fairhaven and Bellingham in Vancouver, BC. And most people, the almost a million people who live between the border and Vancouver, said that they would rather drive to Blaine and get on the train. That's a huge economic development potential for that community. Mm -hmm. If we drive people, literally drive them in their cars, 
park, what are they going to do in addition to catching the train? They're going to have lunch, they're going to go to shops, they're going to buy some things. And that is something really that I think Blaine could benefit from. And this whole region could benefit from having that increase of rail traffic capacity. So we're trying to move away from an economy that is so dependent on cars and driving everywhere. And that's one way we can get forward on it. So thank you. Thank you. There are 175 ports in the country, 75 of them in the state of Washington. Ports were created to create jobs. Job creation and retention and transportation needs of the region. So when you think of that, you need to keep that in mind when you're thinking of what we can do for Point Roberts as a port of Bellingham. We haven't done much for you, to be honest with you, but it hasn't cost you a whole lot either. If you have a $300,000 house, you pay $60 a year. In the past 12 years, that's gone up six cents. Now, if you use our airport in Bellingham, you, you have an asset that you can use. And you might think, well, you just go to Vancouver. But a lot of you come to Bellingham and get a direct flight to Las Vegas or San Francisco or uh, uh, anywhere in uh, uh, Los Angeles, a direct flight to Hawaii either through Allegiant or Alaska or down to Arizona. So you would use it there. Uh, but to be honest with you, we haven't done much for Point Roberts, but Point Roberts hasn't asked us to do much. Ports have the ability to get grant money that you can't get. And so if you, if you come forward with a project, we will certainly look at it. The only project that anyone's come forward with that I've seen was a pier, and we did a study on that pier, and it looked so expensive uh, it, it did never, it, it never transpired. Economic development, uh, please think also, Walla Walla has a port, and it's for the wine business. And they, they do uh, uh, industrial sites for wine. If you folks come up with anything in the, in the realm of economic development, we can probably help you with that. And I'd love to hear from, from you folks on what we can do in that fashion. And you will, by the way. There's an advisory committee up here that uh, we're working on a um, proposal slash plan uh, for economic development up here. And we're, one of the sources we're going to are going to be coming to um, uh, is the port. And one of the representatives on the board, right, he's, he's basically heading this up. You know, his, name sure. is, his name is Dave Velasquez. So whoever's on the port, you will be hearing from us. Okay? I look forward to it. Okay, okay. Well, so we've got three. So I think Arthur was next. Yeah. Uh, Arthur Weaver, um, I chaired that committee that he's the chairman <laughs> quite a few years. And with Mark Robbins and um, uh, another, uh, unfortunately, deceased member of the community, we had a long meeting with the uh, board commissioner several years ago. We entertained a variety of different possible projects. And um, they went nowhere. Uh, as you said, the decision on the dock in particular was too expensive. We didn't agree with you, but you know, we didn't make the decision. But if you want to know about a project, I'll give you one quickly, and you can start thinking about it later. There is a, a place uh, on Playboy, it's called Lighthouse Park. It is not a comment to bump into someone just visiting and says, so oh, where's the lighthouse? Uh, and that's because there isn't one. But there's a design for one. And there's a half a million dollars sitting on the table ready to s sponsor it and to support it, but it's not sufficient in terms of the actual construction of it. If you want to know about business, it's modeled on a model that was established in Virginia, which has turned into a center for the community, an educational resource that boosts business, that hosts weddings, Boy Scout celebrations, it expands around the entire area, it draws people, from all around the district. It has generated a $2 million a year business there. We need a half a million dollars. I'm sure that Joel, the people from David will have the information for you. Sure. So, uh, I was, was going to skip it. Yeah, I, I, don't I was going to skip it. To take a little further, one of the projects, Steve Wolf. Oh, I'll sit for a second. 
but um, <laughs> I have a knee that doesn't like me to think. Anyway, uh, uh, one of the economic development plans um, that's trying to be formulated, and, and Joel spoke to it, Arthur speaking to other aspects of, of it uh, all on for free, is uh, Gulf Road. Gulf Road uh, with some, some regulatory changes, which I think uh, Joel's committed to, to effect. Um, with the help of the kind of council and, and the planning department could do a real good job here of changing some things that are very vexing for bringing uh, development. There's only one new building here in how many years? Anyway, so at least there's something going on. But um, uh, I like, personally, I like to see this as a software high-tech center, which includes um, uh, affordable housing, which includes uh, um, office space, which includes lab space and light industrial workshop space. And that vision, uh, which is just me talking right now, but I'm sure there's a lot of people that would key into it, would really help us. It might bring 500 paid jobs to Gulf Road or thereof, and therefore all the other uh, 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 businesses, such as restaurants and the golf course and, and all the homes that, that, aren't, that may or may not be selling and homes that have yet to be built could start to happen. It would bring a lot of money to Point Roberts. And I think that we could get people to come because uh, what we have found out is that there are young people who have moved here. Some are still taking what I call a San Francisco salary, but they're living in Point Roberts with their family. And um, you can do very well under that economic situation. And so we've become a satellite for many, say 20 or 30 small companies and a few big companies a satellite organization that has a lot of value. Thank you. And any comments there? Uh, I have one comment. I'd yeah, like please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, regarding the Lighthouse Project, I was so excited when that came across our desk that we had a half a million dollar donated for that part. And I was somewhat disappointed that we weren't able to move it forward. I, I'm a lot disappointed because we had such opportunity to build such a great, great iconic piece of, of park for you guys. And I just hope we can keep that up on the front burner and don't forget about it. Let's keep challenging the county council. We'll, we'll try to work with the parks department to, to figure out how we can do that because, you know, it's just the parks department kind of shut it down because they, they said there was some, it wasn't enough money. Well, it wasn't enough money for maybe what they had in mind for a design. We just got to keep working together and try to figure out a way to make that happen because this is an opportunity that doesn't come along very often anywhere, let alone here. So I just wanted to, to address that and tell you how much in favor I am of that project. Keep in mind that parks are, are basically with the county, uh, not the port. But ec any economic development is with the port, and we do look forward to taking any of those forward. That you, you, I, I, I have seen, in the four years I've been a port commissioner, I haven't seen one proposal come across my desk from here. So uh, please bring it forward. I, I encourage you to do it. Thank you. You heard it. <laughs> No, we'll, we'll be down to talk to you soon. Thank you. <laughs> I look forward to it. Keith Clayton. Um, one of the things that we are talking about to try to help with economic development, particularly initially, particularly along Gulf Road, is a, a sewage treatment facility, not, not the traditional sewage treatment facility. This would use wetlands to naturally treat sewage. And it can be built, it's not terrifically cheap, but it would solve a couple of problems. One of the problems with the property along Gulf Road, which is zoned commercial, <coughs> is that a lot of the property cannot be developed because of wetlands. But if you mitigate wetlands, move them basically, then that opens up space for more development. And with a centralized sewage treatment facility, it makes it more attractive. Because you, another problem that you have here is putting in septic for each piece of property. So that's the a, that's a thing that um, the PRCAC is talking about a bit. But it's one of the things that 
we would definitely need some horsepower behind grants to get this thing off the ground. That is the type of project the ports do. We just worked on the water treatment plant and got grants for the uh, water treatment plant in Wyndham. And so that is what we work on, and those are the projects we'd like to see. And so please bring those forward. That is a port issue. What are you doing after the meeting? <laughs> <laughs> or next Tuesday. <laughs> Any other questions? I, I just want to to um, my understanding is you get your water from Vancouver, correct? Pardon me? Yes. You get your yes. water from Yeah. Yes. Yes. Has there been discussion about sending it back? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Not that I know of. Yes. Uh, the, yes, we, we've talked to the water department. We have a water commission. The water commission about would they like to take on sewage as well. Right. And let's say they're not enthusiastic about that. Because I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, I think we do that at Sumas. I think we send the stuff north. So uh, that, that is one option that's worth exploring because if we can tap into, if we can tap into the Vancouver sewage system or Tawasan sewage system, and clearly that would, would give a lot more flexibility in terms of you know, the beauty of this nationally treating sewage is that it's ecologically sustainable it also solves as i said some of the wetlands problem by moving the wetlands into areas that are where they aren't currently and using those wetlands as the, as a natural treatment facility and this has been done in a couple of years and the water comes out it's completely potable but they're not allowed to just tap into a water source there. Right. And I'd be interested in hearing, I'm not familiar with that particular technique. I've spent a fair bit of time studying sewage options in the cat in, in the incorporated part of the county. And I know in areas where the soil is not good enough, you end up having to put in a, an effectively a mound system mm -hmm. to do it. Um, I haven't heard the one you were talking about today. I'd be interested in that. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions? <laughs> okay, so that's it. Thank you very much, everybody.